Hello, uh, I'm Sarb Sodi, the director of undergraduate ultrasound, and I'm going to talk to you briefly about bil biliary ultrasound. So let's start with a quick reminder about anatomy and why we care. So the gallbladder is a organ that sits in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. It is where your digestive juices tend to tend to be stored. So typically, during the process of digestion, the gallbladder will empty through the cystic duct into the common bile duct and it'll empty into the small intestine and help with digestion. There is a few things that can happen that goes wrong with the gallbladder. Uh, first and foremost, one of the more common conditions is cholelithiasis. Um, I'll leave the clinical description and how to figure that out to your clinical professors. But as a reminder, it is a fairly, co fairly common diagnosis and we see a fair amount of that in Cooper in particular. Uh, that being said, it's usually a relatively benign uh, experience for the patient other than the miserable pain that can come with it. That typically is not life-threatening, but it is worth knowing about, and then if you have refractory cholelithiasis, occasionally it requires a cholecystectomy or removal of the gallbladder. The other disease to be worried about is something called cholecystitis. So cholecystitis, as the name would imply, is an infection of that same gallbladder. It can occur in addition to or in absence of cholelithiasis. So you may or may not have a stone that's causing an obstruction and an infection. Um, if there is one that could explain it and if there isn't there's other reasons people can get it. But people with cholecystitis can tend to get fairly ill and they almost always will require surgery and frequently require and always require antibiotics. So with that in mind, this is why we care. Now, as a quick reminder of the anatomy, you're looking at the liver first. Um, you'll be, so in the right upper quadrant, if you were looking at from the right side of the patient towards the left side of the patient, you'd have to go through the liver to get to the gallbladder. And as a reminder, the kidney hangs out right around there. So you would go look through the liver and you'd find the gallbladder there. As a reminder, you do have all of these other things to worry about. The hepatic ducts are harder to find on ultrasound and not typically relevant. People argue about whether or not the common bile duct being found has a ton of utility in the point of care setting. It is definitely something that the radiologists do. For the purposes of what we're discussing, we will not be talking at all about the common bile duct. Okay, so let's get started. As a reminder, whenever you do any point of care study, you have the same orientation you always will, with your probe marker towards patient head or your probe marker towards patient right. Great. So, a quick reminder about long and short axis. So if you think about something cylindrical, like a vessel, and here's what that's what you see on the screen right there. If you see a cross section of that image, so if you have a long cylinder and you see a circle, essentially, that would suggest that you're seeing short axis. So if you think about it, grab something in front of you like a milk bottle if you have one, or your water bottle if you have one. Now use your use your phone as the stand as the handy dandy ultrasound replacement. If you put the if you put your phone perpendicular to the length of your to the length of your water bottle, that is a short axis view. If you rotate it so it's running parallel to the length, it's a long axis view. And this is what a long axis view looks like, where you can see the entirety of the vessel or the structure in question in that view. Now that applies a lot for the gallbladder because we will talk about it in terms of long and short axis. So we'll get started. Um, as a quick example of a case, this was a pregnant woman who came in with excruciating upper abdominal pain, which starts to get complicated. Given the fact that she's pregnant, obviously you don't want to do a ton of uh, ionizing radiation scans. Additionally, the test of choice for biliary disease is ultrasound, um, and point-of-care studies are shown to be about 90% sensitive, so a point-of-care study was the first thing that they did. So as a reminder of anatomy, your probe marker is here. Your with, and it's oriented towards patient head in this situation. They're using the curvilinear probe, that is a low frequency probe, and it gives them a fair bit of depth they can see. The gain looks nicely adjusted. So, as you're looking first at the screen, you see this nice homogeneous appearing structure with a capsule around it that's bright. So that up there would be the liver. You find the liver first, and that's helpful. Then you notice this appear towards the very end of the clip. And that structure, right about there, that structure there, that's the kidney. So now you know you're in the right upper quadrant, you're between the liver and the kidney, and then in the beginning part of this section you have a blind ending pouch of something that contains anechoic looking fluid. So the only blind ending pouch, and we know it's blind ending because as they're fanning through that area you can see it sort of disappear, 
the only blind ending pouch in the right upper quadrant anatomically is the gallbladder. So that's what the gallbladder looks like and you see it sort of being swept through. So after they do that initial sweep they go ahead and they do it again a little bit more slowly and there you see a long axis view of the gallbladder and you know that it's a long axis view because you can see that entirety of that gallbladder all laid out in this one still right here. Now they do a, they do a long axis view and they sweep through and they make sure that they get to this area right here which is the neck of the gallbladder, a frequent spot of missed stones. After they do their long axis view they go ahead and they rotate the probe 90 degrees to its patient right and they get this view. And it's not a perfect circle, the gallbladder isn't always circular, but it does look like a short axis view where essentially it is a more squat um, foreshortened image and you can and they're sweeping through that entire area, again making sure they examine the neck. Now in this situation you're looking for a gallstone. You don't see one because a gallstone is this bright hyperechoic thing that appears somewhere in the lumen of the gallbladder and it causes shadowing right behind it that makes everything disappear. After they're done that, the next step they do is they measure the gallbladder wall thickness. Now, as a reminder, you want to measure the gallbladder wall, and this is not completely perfect, but you want to measure perpendicular to the wall itself. So instead of going this in this angle, they will go this way. Now, the reason that's not a huge deal in this situation is if anything, it overestimates the gallbladder wall. A gallbladder wall should be no more than 0.3 centimeters or 3 millimeters thick. If it's more than three millimeters thick, you'd worry about something like cholecystitis, but bear in mind that other diseases can cause you to have an isolated and uh, thickened gallbladder wall. So you measure the gallbladder wall, and you always want to measure it on the anterior or the more superficial part of the gallbladder. The reason why is because if you look down here, it looks like this gallbladder wall is a little bit thicker. Now, if you have isolated gallbladder wall thickening, that can be a number of things, but in this situation, this looks very much like there's a phenomenon called posterior acoustic enhancement, where essentially a fluid-filled structure causes the back part of a back part of the wall to look like it's thicker than the front part of the wall because of the fact that the machine gets confused and it expects everything to have the same echo texture instead because as a change in speed, it basically causes this random artifact. Okay, so deep breath, we'll jump into the next case. You have a young woman complaining of severe right upper quadrant pain. So you do a quick bedside ultrasound. So this is a short axis view this time. And again, you can see that nice, perfect circular appearance. And then unlike last time where that lumen looked nice and anechoic, this time it doesn't look as anechoic. There's sort of this big, bright thing right up there that causes you to shadow out and hide everything. So this is a giant gallstone that is causing a fair bit of pain. So they look at that and they get a little bit concerned and then they're trying to decide is it cholelithiasis alone or is it potentially cholecystitis as well. So they move over and they do a long axis view. And there you see right up there the gallstone. We'll play that again and pause right about there. So you see a gallstone that is bright and shadowing and the shadowing right behind it, you see them get all the way down towards the neck, and I don't see any pericholecystic fluid, which is fluid around the gallbladder. That would be concerning for potentially cholecystitis. So, after they do a couple of these images, they go ahead and they measure the gallbladder wall, and that ends up being normal as well. Now, the reason we do those things is cholelithiasis or gallstones is a purely visual diagnosis. You don't need to measure anything. You're just looking to see whether or not there are gallstones. However, I want you to get in the habit of learning how to measure things, so you're going to measure the gallbladder wall when you come in and do a scan. And that's going to look something like this. So, next case you have a man who comes in with severe abdominal pain, hunched over and quite miserable. Quick bedside ultrasound is done, and you get these images. So in this one, as you can tell, you have a long axis view of that gallbladder. You have no obvious stones that I can see on this particular clip, and it otherwise doesn't look terrible. And I'm going to I'm going to drag your eye to something, right around. So right around here, you see this tiny little stripe of fluid that's starting to appear. It could be nothing. It could be something. We'll have to come back and look at that some more. But whenever you're in doubt, 
grab another view. So rotated the probe 90 degrees to get that short axis view. And here you see sort of this looks mildly thickened, at least to the eye, but we should measure it to make sure, which is exactly what they do. So they pick a representative still, and right here they have a beautiful image where you can see the wall up there. And then that is that does look like, like the outer diameter of the wall. So they put the calipers on from the edge to the edge, and they measure it, and it's 0.46, which as we know is enlarged. Also right there you can see a little bit more of that fluid. So this was concerning for the patient having cholecystitis. So when you come in, we will have a limited amount of time, so we will be trying to get you guys scanning quickly and trying to find gallbladders. If you have any questions or concerns, you can always email at sodi at Take care. See you soon.